I would start off by saying he's the future. He's the future of what young people uh, need to, to look up to. He's a leader. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to follow, follow a person of his uh, mental aptitude and his charisma. Um, I see him as a, as a person who is going to take over the media industry. It's funny because you, you don't, you're like, this is Zor, my friend, on, on the mic, like broadcasting to Zimbabwe, you know what I mean? And he's got his radio voice on, CFM, my station, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's humor, actually. I just think he's a good people person in general and a good judge of character. Like, he's the type of person who can meet different personalities but be able to relate with them. As a young boy, he, he was a pleasure being around. Um, he was playful but in a nice way, not in a harmful way. <clears throat> and I think his personality as an achiever really came out uh, when he was at St. John's uh, School in the primary school, uh, where he started winning award, you know, after award, be it, you know, in the classroom, academically, all on the field. I think Zorora is very focused. Once he sets his mind on something, he always tries to see it through. And the good thing about him is, you know, he, he has an idea. He puts it down and then he follows through with it. He talks about it, you know, he invites people to give him opinions on that idea. But he, really what I've seen on him is focused. No, I don't have any cool sayings. I don't have any cool quotes. I don't have a particular quote that, you know, a passage from the Bible, for example, that I particularly abide to and live by. I think life is very simple. I think we tend to complicate it as human beings. And if you are able to do what you want to do, do it. But at the moment, I was 625. So, my class was 14. I think I was about 50, average of 55. So, I was challenged to get my benches and my tables. That was my first this is Teacher Kunda School, a school based in Hatcliff, Harare. The school caters for children who have been orphaned. Zororo took a keen interest in the school and supports by paying school fees and buying school uniforms. I think, you know, one thing I notice is that people, if you're blessed and fortunate to have a platform, and that of media, especially when you get to reach and interact and talk to thousands or hundreds of thousands of people at any given one time, there's some sort of responsibility that's bestowed on you. And I think there's two kinds of people in media. I think there's, there's people who are selfish. Fair enough, that's fine. And it's all about them. They want to build up their brand and, and maximize it. And there's also people who who are aware of this platform and the impact that they you know that they can make through various means and I and I said to myself I want to be different in that regard it was new like it shocked me like in a, in a good way I was like wow like sort of like you're a philanthropist you know like you do that what you know like I, I looked at myself like I need to do something too <laughs> you know like I, I never saw that it shocked me. I guess that's part of growing up, you know. Like he's growing up, he's maturing, giving back, you know. So I appreciate that. I think my dad. My dad always said to me, the one thing that I think a parent should do is raise their kids and send them to school. You know, by doing so, you've empowered them to basically do whatever they want, where they want to do. That's something that he's very passionate about, and he and he always refers to. So you know, I obviously. I'm a victim of that too because I, I, I've heard it all the time but I've seen it pay off. But secondly, 
you know, just I, I was just looking at what was current with regards to the news. You know, teachers unhappy with their salaries, and you know, school children are being turned away. You know. Um, public and national results like O levels and A levels, you know, the, the, the pass rate has fallen and it's something that's constantly in my face and I've done programs on it and I just said, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to be looking to assist people here, what's, what do people really need help with? And, and that was education and, you know, of course we can't affect and change the entire system but, you know, small little, you know, deeds like this hopefully can can get people talking, get people on board with, with trying to help as many people as possible. Well, before, um, he was always the kind of guy who would pretend, <laughs> like we'd be hanging out and then he'd be pretending like he's on a radio show, or he's, on, he's on a TV show and he'd be holding his phone as his mic. Um, so I think it's definitely something he's always been into, but I don't think it was something that he knew then he wanted to take seriously because it was always very light-hearted humor. Um, and then he went to uni, obviously, and he started doing a radio show, and he really enjoyed that. So I can say it's something he knew. He's always had it, he just never took it seriously until now. A go-getter. Zora is definitely a go-getter. He, he walked in almost like guns blazing, like, I know what I want, and uh, no one's going to stop me from getting it. Um, very admirable, I think, that quality to sort of know what it is that you want, especially being so young as he is. Um, yeah, so that was really my first impression of him. And I was very keen to know who he is, you know, as to, you know, where does someone build such confidence? You know, where does that person get that kind of, you know, character or develop that character to be that, you know, go-getter? So I'll tell you how I got into radio. I was at Michigan State University and I studied communication and they had one of the best campus radio stations throughout the United States. And I joined in my first year, got really, really scared and, and said to myself, you know, let me get more comfortable, let me get used to this American culture and I'll come back and, and join the station because the music that they played, the audience was very different. It was indie rock and I'm someone who loves hip hop. So it was very difficult for me to sort of play that music and talk about it with the passion that was required. So in my senior year, I, I picked it up again and I did a, a 10 to, to 12 uh, p.m. Um, sort of shift a couple times a week and, and I began to sort of you know enjoy my radio it's something I always wanted to do but I was actually doing it week in and week out and then I of course was following what was happening back home and I was aware that that ZFM and Star FM were just awarded their radio licenses and I said this is a, a great opportunity for someone like me to come back home and and dive straight into into radio so I made a compilation of all my different mixes that I did on my on my on my show there in the, in the States and I brought it back I um, I sat down with with uh, the Honorable Deputy Minister for Information, uh, Super Mandi Wanzira, and I sat down in his office. I remember I'd, I'd been waiting for him for three four hours. I remember speaking to 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 one of my colleagues now, Ruvi, and she's like, "Just wait for him, you know, just wait for him." So I waited, and I remember him. He was he was eating. He was like, "You know, tell me about yourself." And there I am, you know, telling him about myself, etc. And he's like, all right, well, leave me with your tape and, you know, we'll sort of get back in touch with you. So I left him with my tape. I followed back with him a couple, a couple days ago. And, you know, it's very rare, especially in Zimbabwe. This is something that's done world over for people at the highest office to listen or to read your CV. You actually take time and sort of have an appreciation of what you're trying to offer to the organization. It's usually up to their subordinates or the PAs or their managers, etc. So the fact that, you know, this guy who's had a fantastic career in, in, in you know, in journalism was listening to my stuff, I already was excited about possibly working with this place because I, I was aware of the culture, you know. 
0815 that's 0772 168045 and on this program it's real talk with real people and it comes to you every Monday and Thursday evening from 6 30 p.m. till 7 now my guest tonight is one of Zimbabwe's most renowned and respected businessmen he has a diverse portfolio and his interests vary from retail hospitality and insurance and so much more and tonight I want to find out his thoughts on the economy uh, the direction that the country is going in and of course what his message is for young people so good evening mr. Shingai Mutasa and welcome to the program good evening Zara. how are you excellent you know, Mr. Mutasa, when I first met you, you, you struck me as someone who's very cool. He's got, um, from, from a talent perspective, I think he's got what it takes. He's got what it takes. It's now just, I think, he needs to sort of forge, uh, find himself on radio. Radio in itself, like many, many things in life, you, you sort of have to find your space and draw people who sort of believe in your space and believe in what you're able to do. Um, seeing him sort of evolve from just being the regular guy who just came off the street looking for an opportunity to be on radio having had a little bit of experience at varsity um, now sort of taking on the reins utilizing that uh, and growing himself I mean he practically took himself through training and took in and, and you know and spent the time in, in developing himself um, I think there's so much to look forward to as as a as a presenter, you know, but I think there's a lot more to him. He's got a he's got a business head on his shoulders. He's always thinking of marketing strategies, ways of how to, you know, expand brands, expand himself as a as a brand. Uh, I see it just through all the little parties and you know uh, functions that he he organizes for himself. That you know, this is somebody who really knows the true value of a brand. He, he cares about the different things that he does. So if he's going to organize a party, he's going to want it to be one of the best parties that is thrown. He's going to want people to come and have a good time and want to come back or want to stay longer. And I, I, I think that's something that he carries out through the different things that he does. The mo mo motivation for why I, I multitask and get involved in, in um, a lot of these things is because we we only have one shot at this right we we have one we have one life and um, life is so short and I began to realize that when uh, you get to a certain age right and you have all of these ideas that can become springboards for so many different avenues and platforms and you sort of say to yourself wow imagine if my life ended today you know they would have said this guy had so much potential and it scares me right to that that we really only have one shot of this and that's why I sort of dive in deep with a lot of these initiatives was because um, I want to get things going I want to have an impact I want to I want to create something to be proud of a legacy 